Hey guys, we're working on a car today. JZX 110 Mark II Fortuna Edition. We're going to be replacing the capacitors in the ECU, which is mounted just here. Often the older cars will have problems with the, uh, the capacitors. They get old, they dry out, they leak. Especially in the 90s when they had that, uh, the capacitor plague, which also affected things like uh, computer motherboards and whatnot. And this is a slightly later model, so the capacitors aren't going to be too bad, hopefully. But we figure um, as part of the tuning of the car, we'll replace those capacitors because they are getting a bit old. And that way we at least know that that's not going to be any problem when we're um, trying to trace down uh, gremlins and whatnot. So first of all, we've got to pull the uh, ECU out, which um, we'll do by removing a few screws here. And we can take this cover off, remove this out the way and um, get that ECU removed. It's a little bit noisy in here just because we're in an underground car park. Um, it's been raining a bit for the last few days so it's a bit nicer to work in here apart from the, uh, the bad audio quality. And there we have it. One beautiful ECU. There it is. Nice. All right, back at the bench. We've got our ECU here ready to go. So uh, it looks like we've got to take the screws out to take the back off and this bracket will have to come off. So before we get started, I thought we'd better talk about capacitors. More importantly, sourcing quality capacitors and which capacitors to choose. So first up, you've got to make sure you're buying from a reputable seller. That means no Amazon, no eBay, no AliExpress, no DealExtreme, no Banggood, so on and so forth. Uh, you got to make sure you buy from a good quality company that is reputable and that the industry buys from. Places like DigiKey, Mouser, RS Components, Element 14, Farnell, uh, Arrow, those sort of companies will, um, will have you getting the, the good quality stuff, the good stuff. Uh, then we come to the brand. Um, you don't want to be buying like Capscon or Chong X capacitors. Stay away from them. Uh, those sort of capacitors, you know, from the... Uh, the cheaper like eBay's and uh, Ali AliExpress and stuff. That's fine if you're building like a little Arduino trinket or uh, you know, doing something on a breadboard or whatever. That's fine. Use the cheap stuff for that. But for a uh, a critical application in a rugged environment like an ECU in a car, you need the good stuff. You'll be kicking yourself uh, for ch saving five bucks when you're standing stranded on the side of a highway, hundred miles from nowhere. So make sure, yeah, good quality brand and a, from a reputable seller. It doesn't matter exactly what brand, just make sure it's a good brand. Uh, when we come to the next step, that's uh, what parameters, what uh, specifications on the capacitor that we're choosing. So um, that you'll find that there's a whole range of different uh, specifications, things like high pulse current, uh, low ESR, high ESR, low ripple, high ripple, low inductance, uh, general purpose, high voltage, high uh, temperature, that sort of thing. So you can get a bit confusing sometimes, but you can narrow it down pretty quick. So first of all, I go for nothing less than 105 degree rated caps. You know there's never going to be a problem. I mean, something like an ECU, especially like this one where it's mounted in the engine bay, you need higher, um, higher temperature because the closer you run that capacitor to its rated temperature, uh, the shorter its life. And uh, capacitors rated, they have a rated lifetime. And um, if you can give that capacitor more overhead, that uh, that lifetime is subject to a uh, multiplier, and often that's detailed in the um, in the data sheet. And then you can um, you can calculate out the expected lifetimes. Like it might be, yeah, you know, if you get a 105 degree rated cap and you run at 20 degrees, that say it's 2,000 hours. It might run for 8,000 hours or something. Choose something that's got a a lowish ESR and a high ripple current rating. Uh, that'll give you, once again, more overhead. The higher ripple current rating, the higher that is, the more ripple on the DC coming into the cap it can uh, it can handle, and it's going to have a longer lifetime. It's not going to overheat, and it's not going to uh, burn up and fail. Same with the ESR. Lower ESR means less wastage and heat, less self-heating, and um, a longer lifetime. Uh, if you go too low in ESR in certain applications, you can have problems. But if you go, make sure it's, it's low-ish, 
and you'll be fine. Rule of thumb. The next thing is uh, package size. So we've got. Uh, I'll grab these out for uh, a uh, example. So in the circuit board, there'll be a certain space that the uh, capacitor can occupy. If you put a capacitor that's much larger, you might find that you come up against other components rather than capacitors. So just say these are mounted in there like that in a line. I can make these caps slightly larger in diameter and they will be fine because there's a good space. But if they're mounted in there like this, I'm going to be careful I get something that's a very similar size because there's not much space between them. So you've got to make sure before you buy your caps, open up your unit, measure the capacitors and the space around them. Also, don't forget the height because uh, in this unit, we've got a set height because the enclosure has to, to close over the capacitors. And if they're too tall, well, you're going to have a bad time. Next thing is pitch, lead pitch. That's the uh, spacing between the legs. You can see these ones here, they've got um, a kind of a kink where they come wider. Uh, there's standard uh, pitches, 2.5mm, uh, 5mm, 7.5, 10mm, that sort of stuff. 125 I think. Um, so make sure when you're checking your capacitors and you're measuring them up and writing down the values, uh, flip over the board and measure the distance between the legs where the, pin, the, uh, the pins come through and um, get a capacitor that's close to that. If you, if you find you've got a 2 mil pitch and you buy a 2.5 millimeter capacitor, that's fine, half a mil is fine, but don't try and put something that's got a 2.5 mil pin pitch into a 10 millimeter space holes. Um, if you stretch the legs out, you can kind of form them like this, and that's fine, but if you kind of just stretch them out, you're going to put force on the uh, rubber seal, and it can lead to leakage and failure. So uh, just another thing to watch out for there. Also with the, uh, the ratings, uh, the capacitance and the voltage, um, these are very important. Never go smaller in voltage. Never, ever, ever go smaller in, in voltage. Or you're going to have yourself a little grenade and it's going to smell like popcorn when it goes bang. And um, yeah, you're going to ruin things. Uh, make sure that the voltage is at least the same or slightly larger. These here are, are a 50 volt cap. If these were in a circuit, I wouldn't pull it out and put a 200 volt cap in because that's just too much. There's a whole heap of electrochemistry and you know, uh, oxidation and uh, plating that happens on the... Uh, the electrodes inside, the, the plates inside. Uh, so, you know, 50 volts, I could go to 63 or a, maybe an 80 volt capacitor and that'll be fine, but don't go too high. As for the capacitance, keep it the same. Um, if you've got an older unit and it's got like a uh, 800 microfarad capacitor and you can only buy 820 microfarad capacitor, that's fine. You can go up a little bit just depending on what capacity you can get, but don't go and put a uh, 100 microfarad capacitor where a 10 microfarad capacitor is. Try and keep that value as close as possible, and uh, then you'll be fine. So, if you uh, haven't fallen asleep yet, um, it's now time to open up and see what we've got inside. Okay, what have we got? Oh, that's already broken. Okay. No worries then. It looked like it was in one piece, but it must have been already uh, tweaked. So it looks like I've got two screws on this side, and the rest of it is held by the uh, case screws. So let's undo these two. They're slightly... no, oh no, they're the same. I thought they were going to be slightly longer, but they're the same. And that now comes out perfect. So there we are. So we've got a bunch of capacitors here, a few others here. What's that one? That's a uh, uh, that's a bipolar capacitor, and we've got this chunky one over here. And it just so happens, I have a bunch of capacitors. So we've got the bipolar here. That's a uh, United Chemicon KME series, 35 volt, 47 microfarad. Um, these orange ones are actually uh, high temperature automotive rated capacitors. So we have a whole bunch of these. These are all United Chemicons because United Chemicon make good stuff. Uh, GXE series. I think I oh, got GXL and GXE series. And they're, um, ooh, what's the rating on them? Doesn't say. Oh, there we go. 125 degrees there. Yeah, all 125 degree rated. So they're a bit more than the, um, the standard ones. Some of them have to be standard ones because I couldn't get them in the, uh, in the higher, uh, Temperature. This one is a uh, what, what uh, series is that? GPA series. That's also 125 degrees. This one, the uh, bipolar, is only 105 degrees, but that's still fine. So uh, we've got all the capacitors. Now it's a matter of uh, getting all these 
into here. Let's do the 10 volt 100 mics. So I'm gonna grab some solder. Oh, that one there. Looks like there's no leakage on those ones at least. So things might be not too bad. Okay, so I'm about to put the last uh, new capacitor in, just over here. All these orange ones are brand new, and I've got the bipolar over there as well. Some of these I've actually upgraded the uh, the voltage running, you know, from 25 volts to 35 volts, that sort of thing. Just slightly one step up, just so that um, I've got a little bit more overhead. Things are going to last a bit longer and have a bit more um, ripple current rating and all that sort of stuff. Uh, before I put this last one in, while I've got access, I'm going to actually um, take these uh, screws out for these uh, MOSFETs and transistors and whatnot. And I'm just going to lift them away slightly and put some uh, thermal grease behind. Just uh, for good measure, while I'm in here I may as well do it, get the uh, heat out of these things and uh, just ensure that they're going to be uh, a little bit more reliable than what they've already been. I mean they've been fantastically reliable being Toyota and uh, well designed, but it can't hurt to put a little bit of uh, thermal grease behind there just to keep things cool as possible. Alright, one thing that's a little bit important with these uh, TO220 packages, these are actually TO220Fs, which means the, uh, the tab is encased in plastic, is uh, the torque on the screw. If you look on the screen now, you'll see um, a rating there, like a, a graph there, and about 0 0.75 newton meters, or 75 centinewton meters, newton centimeters, centinewton meters, whatever it is, um, is the optimum there. If you actually go too tight, you lose uh, thermal uh, conductivity there. So um, I've got my uh, torque screwdriver here set to... Uh, uh, 50 plus 25, 75 centinewton meters. And if I tighten that up till it goes click, that's perfect. Awesome. So I'm going to continue with all the rest and uh, we should be sweet. Okay, that's all the uh, transistors slash MOSFETs done. So now we can stick this one back in. Now you may notice I've been using my desoldering uh, gun to solder. That's because this one kicks out a little bit more heat than this one. The uh, nozzle's thicker so I can get more heat into the uh, into the circuit board. So sometimes with these sort of multi-layer boards, I think this is a four-layer board, six-layer board, not sure, but it is a multi-layer board and um, 
they can suck the heat away when they've got big ground planes on the inner layers. So I'm just using this uh, this desoldering gun as a soldering iron just to get the heat in quicker. So I'm not baking the uh, the components for so long. I think that's good. All right. One last little wipe. Get any flux residue away. Nice. We are done. Time to stick it back in its home. I'm going to cheat a little bit. And with that, we are done. Ready to go back in the car. Alright, back in the underground garage, ready to put it in. Nice label there telling us when we've replaced these caps. And that is ready to go back in the, uh, in the slot. So we'll stick it in. I'll be back in a sec and uh, we'll start the car, see if it works. Alright, that's all installed. Ready to start the engine. It's working. Mm -mm. Smells good. Alright, well, that's it. We are done. ECU's repaired, cars running fantastic. We'll see you in the next one.